This video is sponsored by Storyblocks. In 2020, I specifically remember thinking, wow, I am kind of exhausted by the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Everything that isn't Avengers is terribly mediocre, now there's a Black Widow movie coming out, and it's, it's Black Widow, so... so I sleep? I kept saying the MCU should have ended with Endgame. And, to be fair, that would have been a perfect finale. But now, a year later, WandaVision comes out, and it's ridiculously good. The problem is that it doesn't stick the landing. But I rather appreciated what the show was going for. The MCU is evolving, it's trying new things, most likely because it's become so insanely popular that they can honestly do anything they want now. And while WandaVision tries new things visually and film-wise compared to the rest of the MCU, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier makes it its mission to tackle new controversial themes and stories, and at a perfect time, too, with Marvel having massive success and with a world ready to tackle themes like these. Now here's the main thing. I'm here to talk about the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and the story of the show. And the story is very clearly political, and talks about racism, and how the United States treats its veterans and refugees, etc. And if you think that's cringe, well, you can just leave, I guess, because I'm not gonna deny the show its own message. I'm here to talk about it. I think the show tackles these issues incredibly well, and in general, comic books themselves have been politically charged with lots of social commentaries since their inception. Speaking of comics, funnily enough, this speech from OG Steve Rogers is the central theme of this entire show. It doesn't matter what the press says. It doesn't matter what the politicians or the mob say. It doesn't matter if the whole country decides that something wrong is something right. This nation was founded on one principle above all else, the requirement that we stand up for what we believe, no matter the odds or the consequences. So when the mob, and the press, and the whole world tell you to move, your job is to plant yourself like a tree beside the river of truth, and tell the whole world, no, you move. Now before we get started, this video is sponsored by Storyblocks. Storyblocks is an affordable online subscription service that makes finding HD video content and images easy. So if you want to bring your stories to life, Storyblocks is the place to go. I use Storyblocks all the time. I use Storyblocks' stock footage in this video and most of my videos. With the unlimited all access plan, you get unlimited downloads of HD stock footage and images, After Effects templates, overlays, and more. So go get some high quality, royalty free images right now by going to storyblocks.com slash browntable or go to the link in the description. Seriously, they're great, and if you make videos, they make your videos look so much more professional, it's crazy. So one more time, go to storyblocks.com slash browntable or go to the link in the description to get some high quality, royalty free images. Thank you so much Storyblocks for sponsoring this video, check them out, supporting them supports the channel, and let's get on with the video. I think The Falcon and the Winter Soldier is one of the best things the MCU has put out. Out of all their productions, I feel like this is the most important, story-wise. I remember saying, wow, WandaVision is definitely one of the best things the MCU has made, and honestly, it's better than like half of what the MCU has produced. But Falcon and the Winter Soldier makes WandaVision look ridiculously mid. And by the way, as I say this, I'm not counting Marvel Netflix, that's entirely different, and Daredevil is better than the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe, okay, anyway. The Falcon and the Winter Soldier is all about people who have differing agendas, all going against each other. Every single character believes they're doing the right thing, and the story occurs when these agendas clash. It can be as simple as Bucky thinking Sam shouldn't have given up the shield, and something more complicated like how Sam and Bucky don't think John Walker deserves the shield. And man, it is rich as shit. The show has some of the best character work in the entire MCU. So before we get to ideologies, let's just talk about something I just adore about the show, and that's the fact that these characters feel like people. They aren't quip machines that simulate human emotions. The Falcon and the Winter Soldier succeeds in making most of its characters feel like people who live lives, have desires, and are just doing their best day to day. It is so refreshing to see what Sam's life is like outside of superheroing, what Bucky's life is as well. The show really develops these side protagonists that have not had enough screen time, and how they bring their own personal struggles into the action is what makes for great superhero storytelling. We have Sam, someone who's been resurrected thanks to Tony Stark, and he's struggling to make ends meet even though he's a literal superhero. He's given up the shield as he believes not only does he not deserve it, but he isn't ready for the ramifications if he does accept 
accept it. Worse, his sister wants to sell his family boat, something he doesn't want to happen. There's this scene in a bank that is just so great, because it's nice to see a superpowered being have to struggle with things regular people face. It humanizes the character and makes us empathize. Bucky, on the other hand, is in therapy, so hey, good for him, and he's trying to right his wrongs and make amends due to his Winter Soldier past. Thing is, he's going about this the wrong way. The whole Nakajima subplot is absolute gold, dude, and seeing a hero trying to find love is just such a nice feeling. I think it's because most of the time the hero falls in love with the obvious female lead and seeing something a lot more casual is very much appreciated, at least by me. Thing is, Bucky's guilt, his past that he can't escape still traps him. It shows flaws in our heroes, our heroes aren't perfect, and then we meet John Walker who exhibits similar flaws. He's just a person, but now has to embody the symbol of an entire nation. Captain America is more than Iron Man, than Hulk, than friggin' Iron Patriot because he symbolized the best of what America can be since World War II. Captain America is an icon. John Walker has been built by the US government to become that icon, and to meet those expectations is pretty much impossible. Let's not forget also that there never was supposed to be another Captain America. Steve chose Sam to be a successor, but Sam ultimately takes the personal choice to decline and hand the shield to a museum dedicated to Steve and his accomplishments. That's how the legacy of the shield was supposed to end, only for a new Captain America to be brought forth despite what Sam and Steve wanted. And then there's Carly, easily the weakest link in the entire series, but that doesn't mean her story is any less poignant. A commentary on how the United States, more so the world, treats its refugees and immigrants, Carly wants to return the world to how it was before the blip, when people were helping each other during crisis. For five years, people have been welcomed into countries that have kept them out using barbed wire. Bruce. And then boom! Just like that, it goes right back to the way it used to be. To them, at least Carly's doing something. And so, the Flag Smashers want to return to a world without metaphorical flags, as in no countries, no borders, and while their intentions can definitely be sympathized with, the show shows them, especially Carly, growing increasingly violent and radical and not in the epic way. <laughs> And Zemo is out here increasing the tension of it all. He believes that Carly is a supremacist, he believes that the Super Soldier Serum will corrupt and the Flag Smashers will place themselves above others, unable to realize that that isn't assured, and Steve Rogers, for example, isn't like that at all. But that's the thing, isn't it? Steve Rogers is one of a kind. Train on. What does it feel? Like it's someone else's. There's all this shit about the Flag Smashers and the Power Broker, and it's all pretty messy and it prevents the series from being the best it can be, but when the series excels, it does so with so much force because it knows what it wants to say with at least one of its stories. Captain America the hero, Steve Rogers, is a great man with incredible ideals, willing to go against his country in order to do what's right. But Captain America is more than Steve Rogers. It's a symbol that has many different meanings to many different people. Sam, Bucky have only ever really seen Captain America as Steve. Meanwhile, people like Zemo and Isaiah see the shield and think of the problems in the world. Those stars and stripes don't mean nothing good to me. Desire to become a superhuman cannot be separated from supremacist ideals. Anyone with that serum is inherently on that path. That's also the kind of thing Walker now has to deal with. Do you know who I am? Yes, I do, and I don't care. It's kind of brilliant how the show makes Walker very obviously not Captain America, his attitude, his behavior ultimately culminating in him, someone with authoritative power, murdering someone who, while in the wrong, can't defend himself and is begging for his life. John Walker doesn't have what it takes to be Captain America. It should have been clear as day when this bit of dialogue popped up. You ever jump on top of a grenade? Yeah, actually I have, four times. It's a thing I do with my helmet, it's a reinforcement. Um, it's a long story. And even though John Walker isn't the greatest guy, he's genuinely doing his best, which is what makes his character so compelling. But there's that difference between his approach to things, which is pretty much violence first, compared to Sam's approach, which is to understand the enemy and attempt to neutralize the situation without anyone getting hurt. Sam has this caring, nurturing side to him. We see this in Captain America the Winter Soldier, when he's helping people process their PTSD, their traumas. And in Falcon and the Winter Soldier, we see him trying to understand Carly's issues to better resolve the conflict. Carly in general is a fine, albeit underdeveloped character. 
She kills people, but only people that were involved with the mistreatment of other human beings. And her motivations are noble, she's just going about it in the completely wrong way. Her journey, going from wanting to save people to eventually killing people and being okay with becoming a martyr because there will always be people who will believe in the Flag Smasher's cause, is pretty wild and pretty great. The only problem with Carly is that her goals are too broad. The show makes it clear why she's doing what she does, but it doesn't make her endgame super clear. And without a clear endgame, the audience will always feel slightly unengaged with the conflict because they're not super sure what people are fighting for. It makes for really weird scenes where Carly and the Flag Smashers just talk about their beliefs and how the world is screwing them over and how they're gonna stop it, but like, how? <laughs> Seriously, how? Thankfully, plans are set in motion by the final episode. By the show's end, the most mid thing about the show is the Flag Smashers. There's this overall tone to the show that I don't think I've felt in the MCU since maybe Winter Soldier. Before that, it'd have to be Iron Man. And I think it's because the show, along with those two movies, want to portray reality in a more serious, honest way. Tony Stark? Yeah, he was an arms dealer who propagated wars. Captain America? Worked in a corrupt institution of the government, S.H.I.E.L.D. And the only way to defeat Hydra was to completely destroy S.H.I.E.L.D. for it to be rebuilt by the right people. And now, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Isaiah Bradley is one of the most important characters in the entire series, despite showing up in a handful of scenes. Someone who was tested on by the government to ensure the continuation of the Super Soldier Serum to create the next Steve Rogers? His story is so tragically told, I cried, man. Isaiah has lost faith in his country and in the symbol of Captain America. Because all he sees when he sees the shield is the pain it caused him, and the lives and history that were erased for it. A couple of the boys get captured on a mission. Those are my men. My brothers, not evidence. So I bust out of the facility one night. And I brought them boys back. And what did I get for saving their lives? It's an important moment for Sam because it's the question of, should I be Captain America? The bigger question being, should I even try to become the symbol Steve represented, a symbol that represents America's greatest values, when a part of America won't accept me as the face of that symbol? Forget Carly, forget Zemo, forget Sharon, one of the things the Falcon and the Winter Soldier is all about at the end of the day, like it or not, is representation. You know, it's interesting. I'm rather young. You know, just a few years ago, I was a dumb teen who thought that having to see yourself in superheroes was cringe. Who cares if Peter Parker doesn't look like me? Spider-Man still rules. Superman's this white dude, but who cares? It's all about the character and their relatability, their struggles and all that shit you hear time and time again. And then I saw Spider-Verse. And for the first time, I saw a Latino superhero on screen, a biracial Spider-Man. And the moment Miles' mom spoke Spanish and Miles spoke Spanish back, I knew that I had been wrong for years. Do I prefer Peter Parker over Miles Morales? Hell yeah. I love Peter Parker. He's the OG. He's Bay, you know? But Miles has more in common with me than Peter ever will. And that's important. And now, seeing Pedro Pascal, a Latino in The Mandalorian, seeing the Shang-Chi trailer, this Asian dude kicking ass, and Mark Grayson, another Asian character, being the main hero of this animated series, Invincible, I'm just so happy that I get to see characters that reflect my roots on the big screen. And it's important for black kids to be able to see a story about a man that looks like them deciding to become the symbol of America. The story isn't condemning Steve Rogers, by the way. Sam idolizes Steve. It's the symbol Steve wears that certain people have issues with, and they all have legitimate reasons for hating it, seeing the symbol is false hope. Sam in the end decides to wear it and give people hope again. And to become Captain America, he has to train. And to do so, they do a montage scene. And oh my god, I've been missing montage scenes so much. Thank you. One of the greatest things about the finale is that while cool and fight heavy, the climax is the death of a teenager. <laughs> and Sam arguing with those in positions of power to give more power to the people, to stop treating refugees, human beings, like sheep, and to give the common person, people, like you and me, more of a say in political decisions. Whether you like the scene or not is up to you, but that is what the scene is trying to say. The moment felt like the writers genuinely were half making the speech fit the scene, and half making the speech reflect what's going on in the world today. 
It's like the Wonder Woman 1984 ending speech, but it wasn't full of platitudes this time. It's a legitimate call for those in power to do something. And it's a wake-up call for the average person to realize that their lives are being affected by these types of people in positions of power. The show is portraying a heightened reality, and I think that's what's so cool about it. And again, you can dislike how the show's messages are delivered, that's totally fine. I personally appreciate the lack of subtlety and the directness of the message. And I think that's what makes it more effective. It pulls no punches, and it feels like a Captain America speech to me. I will say, my only problem is that Sam's like, nah, Carly isn't a terrorist, and it's like... I get what they're trying to do. They're trying to comment on how you shouldn't immediately label groups of people and just brush them off, but... She kind of broke into a government building and kidnapped people and was willing to kill them, and also blew up a building injuring 11 people and killing three? I don't know. It felt like such a weird thing to say, and it would have been so easily avoided if they just made Carly not kill people. But hey, maybe I'm wrong, and I have no idea what I'm talking about. I'm on YouTube after all. In my opinion, the series can be a little messy, and the finale is a little bit sloppy. But ultimately, everything pulled together. And the emotional climaxes of everyone's arcs makes it such a great watch. There were cheesy scenes that felt Raimi-esque, which made me feel excited to watch a superhero on screen again. If you didn't realize, this is what's on the thumbnail of the video. It is a masterpiece, James. Complete. Comprehensive. And yeah, I put that in for the meme. I don't really think the show is a masterpiece in every possible way. Like, John Walker is now a US agent, and his journey was really weird. His redemption was way too quick, in my opinion, and I feel like by the way his character was progressing, he wouldn't have saved the bus full of people. But that's just me. Thing is, this show is one of the few MCU productions that has truly impacted me. One that made me feel, made me think, made me cry. I've always been critical of the MCU for robbing creators of their distinct voice, but it does seem like they're getting much better at it. And with how Phase 4 is going and how Loki is looking, I don't know how to feel about Disney anymore. Captain America 4 has been announced, Sam Wilson is now Captain America, and that's dope. I'm excited for the future of the MCU once again, like I said with my WandaVision video. And I hope Marvel keeps going forward with this type of storytelling. If you didn't know, there's new merch on the Brown Table crowd made. Check it out in the link in the description. Thanks so much, Lack of Creativity, for this awesome Interstellar Ranger Commands fan art. I really like the style you went for this. This is dope. Thank you so much. And check out Interstellar Ranger Commands if you haven't. Link in the description as well. So thank you, Chad, so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Now is time for the Patreon question of the video. So Yenzel Rojo asked three questions, so I'm gonna answer one of them. What is your most anticipated MCU show? Now, well, currently I guess it'd be Loki, because it's coming out right now, but if it wasn't Loki, it'd have to be Moon Knight. And I think the reason why is because I know this character is a very, very dark character. Way darker than Daredevil, and Daredevil was TVMA on Netflix, and I'm, I'm wondering if they're gonna make the show TVMA or TV14. I'm really excited for what the show is gonna bring, and in general, I'm really excited for most MCU shows. So thanks again, Jens, for the question. Thank you, patrons, for supporting me. It really means a lot. And of course, if you want to become part of the Chad Nation, the biggest nation on the entire planet, all you have to do is click the subscribe button and turn on notifications. Thank you so much for watching the video, and I hope you come back to the table.